All right, hopefully my audio is working. It said it was on here a minute ago. Uh, okay, so start from the beginning. Uh, February 28th, I checked out um, the implied moves on the SPY. Put those in here so that gives you the high, low, whatever, um, to see if it would actually hit that. You know, just a snapshot on February 28th, what it said. That purple line is where it's actually been. And the green and red is the the implied move. So it's stayed within that. So if you were buying iron condors based on that implied move, just trade, you know, getting on the inside of this, uh, especially when it changes directions, you're going to, you're going to lose there. Um, now, if you were selling the iron condors outside of these lines, um, with the exception of actually on February 28th, where it closed right at, uh, or yeah, outside of that. Um, but you want to do those several days out anyway. Um, so if you were selling these outside of here, you make out every time, but the problem is at some point it's going to break out. It's going to go into this, whether you have a break to the upside downside and you're going to lose pretty big because you can't sell those things for very much. It's a real high risk, but, um, here's the next thing I did. So I took the, the SPY, um, there's a website, it's real small, just nasdaq.com slash symbol slash SPY historical. You can just type in any of those and it gives you the open, high, low, close, all that. Um, and then I kind of went by days of the week. So which set of uh, days does it have the highest move? So I looked at uh, you know, Monday through Friday was the first one I looked at. I took the average Monday through Friday. It was a $6 move, um, Friday through Thursday. So these are four day blocks. So like Monday through Friday has the highest move. Usually, um, this is the, the amount that it moved, not the direction. It doesn't really matter if you're doing iron condor. So all I wanted to see was how much was it moving? The lowest one was 239 in the last however long you know, on a Monday through Friday. Um, but that was actually a short week. So that's actually based on buying it on a Friday, selling on a Friday. So really outside of that, we're at $5 last week. And then you get back into here, we're at four, 461. It was slow moving, but consistent. But the only time where it wasn't moving that range was when it was just flat like this. And I don't think I would have traded iron condor when it was that flat anyway especially after that week i would have waited probably uh, and those were those were two short weeks there anyway so yeah i just want to stay out of that it was low volume too if you look at that okay so um basically i combined these two different strategies um if you buy an iron condor on the spy you like yesterday on monday it opened at 273 and remember that thing's moved at least two dollars every single week like from monday to friday so um the short strikes i put two dollars out so chances are it's going to be either on this side over here or on this side over here um right in here is where you would have your your loss or in between these two obviously you've got uh, you know partial loss or partial gains um i bought these for 71 this set of contracts so um, it would be 271.29, I think would be the break even. If I'm thinking about that right. Um, so, but right in here, you wind up with your loss. So that's where I kind of, if you're selling these, selling an iron condor, like way out of the money, um, this is outside of the implied move. Usually, I, I would think you'd look for outside of support or resistance too. Um, it's only $28 credit on that. So you're not making much off of that, but here's the, here's kind of how these things can work together. So say if, um, you know, your, your stock doesn't move, you wind up in with losses. It never gets outside of this range or it closes inside this range. You have max loss, but you're keeping this. So it's decreasing the percent loss. Um, you're, you've still got to win on this. Um, if it gets into this range here, um, you might have a, you know, partial loss, gain, whatever, you're still keeping this, of course. Um, once it gets outside of your strikes, which usually it moves more than $2, so let's say it gets into this area, um, now you're, you've got max gains on this, and as long as it doesn't get outside of this range here, um, well, really 278 is where it starts to get into that one. Uh, I, now I'm just doing Monday through Friday, so there's not, not a lot of time. It, it would have to move a lot to get to that. Um, 
But once you get to that, now you might have some loss there. But in this area, you're going to have max gains on this. You're going to keep 28, and you're going to have max gains on that, which would be 290 plus your 28. So you'd have $318 um, on your initial uh, your initial cost of 710. So that give you a 45%. So this is actually adding a little bit into your percent. It's reducing your risk on the inside here too. Um, so then the other part, like these are risky out here because – uh, you know, if that goes to 281, you're losing $300 and you only made 28 off of that. So that's, it's really a horrible plan. But if that stock gets all the way out here, just make some sort of crazy run, um, your strike difference there is 300. But so let's say you let it get to 281 on, and it just on Friday, it jumps up to 281 from 276 or something. Um, yeah, you're at max loss there, which would be $300. But your inside Condor, one of these sides is going to be at max gains, which is 290 So, I mean, I guess on that whole trade, you, you lost $10, I suppose. Um, well, actually not that. You would be up $18 still because of this. Um, the other thing, too, I figured out on these iron Condors is there's no reason to do multiple contracts, whatever your risk. Um, and, I, and I did this based on this. So, like, if my max profit on this was – going to be around $300. Um, I did a, a three wide strike here. So my max loss is $300 too. So, um, you know, you really can't lose if it goes here. The only way you can lose money is if it stays right in between here and stays flat. But, um, you know, the probability of that, if you, if you go back to, to that was, I mean, it, it's pretty small. It moves some direction one way or another. Um, I'm just not picking what direction. I don't really care. Um, I'm still working on the trade plan to actually close out of this. Like, in theory, like on a Thursday, it could swing way over here. You could close this out at 90, and then the next day it could swing over here. You could close that out at 92. But um, I would say if that gets into this 278 area, you don't wait till it gets to 281 to close where you have max loss because I don't think you're going to actually have um, any point where you'd be losing enough on that to break even. If it gets 279, just close it out. You've got max gains here. But um, close that out when you start approaching that 278 mark. And, and chances are, really, it's not going to move that in one day. It's going to take a few days to get to that, too. So um, let me find the other. Uh, let's see. And yeah, we'll just use this. Okay. So um, I put these green boxes, uh, red boxes on there. And so right in here is in between our our long strikes that we bought on the inside iron condor. That's where you're going to have a loss on that spread, but obviously you're going to keep the one that you sold this way out here. Um, the, the area between the green and the red is the difference between that's probably what our two, 272, 271 put side, for example. So right in there, you could have some loss, some gains on that. You're still keeping your outside one. Um, once you get into the green, that, that whole green is that max profit zone right there. And, um, that's where you're going to keep the the premium on the the outside iron condor, and you're having max on on this one too. So SPY, you know, I bought it somewhere around 273 yesterday. So uh, it looks to me like it's trending down. So we we may close down here in some range. Um, so we'll wait and see. And you don't have to close these out on Friday necessarily. If Thursday it was way down here, or maybe a big pop, you close out then I suppose too. But uh, uh, then once you get outside of the green on either side, that's where the the iron condor that sold starts. Um, so if it gets into that range, you probably want to go ahead and take your profits and close the outside iron condor. You might have a, a small loss on that, but you're going to be at almost max on this then. So um, anyway, I think that's just about everything. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. So uh, I don't know if you have any questions on it. That's, I'm working on one this week, so we'll see how it goes.